Okay, so with our last video, we're just going to be adding in some people and their shadows. So what we want to do is to make sure that we turn those layers on. So using the eye icon, make sure that we can uh, we can see them. So we're going to start with the man. He's currently behind, so we need to drag his layer up above uh, all the others. And we're just going to Command T and we're going to reduce him down to a size that we think is appropriate for the scene and making sure that, that, uh, that his height is in proportion to the rest of the scene. So position him um, where you think necessary, but a good place to put them is sometimes uh, where an edge is. In, uh, in this case, it's uh, where the two shops meet. So he's just going to cover, cover up any imperfections that we might have created. So what we're going to do now is bring in the next lady, and she's currently behind as well. So uh, what you want to do is make sure that her layer is up with the man's so that it's uh, in front of everything. Command T to reduce her height, but we also want to establish that eye level. So using your rulers, just click and drag um, and bring that down to the uh, the first eye level. And then what we're, we're going to position her in a similar place to, uh, to the man and she's going to be covering up that door. So it's really uh, handy if we want to place him anywhere. Okay, so our final lady we have accidentally not brought in, so file open, we're just going to go and find lady 2 and bring her in. Remember, uh, just copy and paste like we've uh, learnt before, and it's going to bring it in on, a, on another layer. So remember that eye level, so when you um, shrink her down, make sure her eye level is still the same, and it doesn't matter if you continue to shrink her, just make sure her eye level is in line with that, uh, with that guide that you've created. Make sure that you uh, rename the layer. So we're going to uh, call her, in this case, uh, Lady2. So don't forget to rename that. It's really important. Otherwise, you might not uh, realize what the layer actually is. Okay, so we've got our three people in. Now we want to uh, create those shadows. So go back to the man. And uh, similar to what we did in the last video, we're going to duplicate that layer. So uh, make sure that, uh, to start with, that you are going to right-click on that layer and duplicate it and we're just going to call it uh, man shadow so we're going to do this for each of uh, the human figures matter of uh, we're going to flip vertically like we did with the other reflections we're going to simply drag it down until his feet matches now with all these keeping in mind the perspective that we're uh, trying to establish here um, you will have to uh, distort him slightly just to get that angle uh, accurate. So once you're happy with that, what we're going to do is, uh, because we don't want to actually see what he's wearing or anything like that, we're just going to create a, a black shadow. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, go in and create a color overlay. So once you're happy with that, going to uh, double click, and it'll bring up this layer style, and we want a color overlay. So click on that. Um, and you can also uh, double click on the left hand side to bring up the palette. Uh, we want a black, so find the black, click OK, and you can see that our uh, shadow has uh, changed to black. Drop the opacity down to about 20%, we still want to be able to see it. But uh, if you zoom in, you can see that our shadow has uh, quite some defined edges and we just want to, uh, to get rid of those. So a really easy way is to apply a filter. So if you go up the top, filter, blur, and we're going to apply what's called a motion blur. So you can see straight away that it looks like this man is walking, and just by increasing the distance um, is going to blur the image even more. So have a play around with that um, and see what effect you like better. And then once you're happy with that, we're just going to use the uh, rectangular marquee tool and just erase that uh, unnecessary reflection or shadow that we've created um, because we only need to see what's on the floor in our image. So we're now going to uh, continue doing that to our other two ladies. Remember, click on the layer, duplicate. We're going to name it Lady One Shadow. Click OK. We're going to go through the same process, flip vertically, drag her down so that uh, we can line up her feet together. This one um, is going to be at a slightly different angle to what the man was uh, because of the perspective. So just uh, keep in mind the direction um, and just keep tweaking that until uh, 
till you're happy and you think it looks uh, realistic as well. So remember, double click on that, we're going to bring up the color overlay, change it to black, click OK, change the opacity down to uh, 20 again, um, go back and distort it if, uh, if need be, like we're just doing here, just until you're happy with it. And using the arrows, you can uh, touch it down. Change the opacity down to uh, 20%. Go up to uh, filter, and it's already uh, remembered the last filter you've applied, so it should be at the top there. And uh, apply the motion blur. Same again, rectangle marquee tool, and you're going to get rid of that um, unwanted shadow. Okay, last lady, we're going to duplicate the, uh, the, sh the layer again and uh, name her Lady 2 Shadow. So don't forget to do that. And we're going to flip vertically again, drag her down until her feet line up. Again, her shadow is going to be at quite a different angle to the last one because of the perspective again. So just keep in mind when you're doing this that you need to make sure that it is looking realistic. Yes, it's just a, a blur on the ground, but it will need to be realistic. So just keep touching it up and down until you're happy with it. Double click. Remember that, um, not, uh, not a gradient overlay, sorry, that's our mistake. Color overlay, you uh, need that one. Change the color to black, click OK. Uh, and then you're going to uh, change the opacity down to 20% again. And finally, apply that motion blur. So you can see there that we've accurately applied three shadows. Get rid of any um, remaining shadows that we don't need in our image. And there you have it. Zoom out to take the full image into view, um, and then that way we can we can really see what we've come to here. So you can see here that we've applied um, a new filter that you probably wouldn't have uh, used before, a motion blur. Um, we've applied and used the polygonal lasso tool and the marquee tool, and we've just copied and pasted images um, into, into our uh, file. And all you need to do now is just do a save as. So what we're going to do for this one is we're just going to save it as a, a JPEG for this exercise. But of course, uh, you can save it to any other file uh, necessary for your assessment brief. So just make sure that you're saving it uh, to what your assessment brief is uh, saying. So click Save. And uh, what we want to do now is make sure that our quality is at high or uh, maximum. I should say, and that is going to be 12. Now, we want to make sure that we save our file that has all our different layers in it, okay? This is really important. If you don't save this file, it will be lost. You want to make sure that you're saving so we can see all your layers when you are submitting this uh, for your assessment. So that's it. Uh, fantastic that you've been able to create this shop facade now and we hope that you've learnt some new techniques and some skills that you didn't know before and uh, we look forward to seeing your work soon. Bye.